The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Well then, my little bunny blue. Let's talk about books. You see, people always say, hey... Steve, is it possible for you to go a single day without eating microwave popcorn? To which I say, possible, yes, probable, no. (laughs) Eleanor, stay out of there. People also say, hey, write what you know. And what I know is that I have been a loyal, if slightly muddled employee at my local bookstore for almost... 17 years. Yeah. 17 years now. If my uh if my career was a person, it would just be bitching and bitching and bitching until I finally broke down and bought it a car. But yes. it would be a first car. So have fun with that used Ford Tempo from 1994 job history. And as such, I really do have my sweaty digits on the pulse of the book world. Consensually, I swear. And I am here to rub my digits, my sweaty digits against your face with this week's remarkably unremarkable installment of Notes from the Bookstore. Yay. Yay. Don't don't think I don't know what you're doing with Notes in the Bookstore. What am I doing? Don't think I've caught on, buddy. I've caught on. I'm I know what you're doing. doing? What do you You, think I'm doing? You are transcribing your your blog to our podcast. Maybe. Lord knows I don't use the blog anymore. (laughs) Uh, I wrote a song. Do you want to hear the song? Sure. Okay. I'm really proud of it. It's a song for our uh, modern day. It's a modern day work of genius. It goes like this. If you're happy and you know it, you're on pills. If you're happy and you know it, you're on pills. If you're happy and you know it, there is no way it's natural. If you're happy and you know it, you're on pills. Yes. So, guess what store just got an 80% on their last secret shop? Yay! A massive improvement from last month when they literally got the lowest score ever in the history of all secret shops. Well, it certainly wasn't the store I work at for legal reasons. The thing is, is that there's a there's just a a crap ton of stores. Don't throw your water bottle out. I know you're excited that you can reach the trash can, but that doesn't mean you get to put everything in the trash can. I'm really sick of looking through the trash to find all the things you threw away, baby. Don't throw things away. Welcome to my you like world. That water bottle. Also, watch where you're walking. That's a box. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Watch where you're walking. Okay. Now picture yourself in a room with ten of those. <sighs> ten of them. Yeah, but it's worse when you have it, it. It. Well, it's probably not worse, but it's it's weirder when you've got like one. And then a bunch of older ones that refuse to help you with the one. Although Amber is a big help. And I'm not just saying that because she's right next to me. I'm (laughs) saying she's a really big help. Uh Eleanor won't let me. Yeah, Eleanor, you're a good distraction for Eleanor. Because Eleanor sometimes is just like, you're brown like my daddy. Let me cling to you. And then she just sucks herself on you like a leech. Hold me. Tell me about the before times in the long, long ago, Amber. Rock me to sleep. Hold me. Love me, Amber. <laughs> it's great. It's great. Loves you. So there's a there's a crap ton of stores out there. And somehow our store. And this is true, but also for legal reasons, this is a lie. Okay. So our store is somehow in the top 30 of the entire nation for year-to-date year best sales compared to last year. 
Nice. Yeah, we get like our. It's an amazing thing, uh, for 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 any store because like when you think of because it, it's like so far this year, this fiscal year, we are so far ahead of where we were last year. And when you think of stores like that, I you know you automatically go okay, California, New York. Uh, I don't know, Washington State, big places like that. So the fact that any store in our uh, tiny little nowhere district <laughs> is is in the top 30, let alone our tiny little store, that's kind of... We get our picture in a newsletter in junk. Yeah. It's like an interview. Apparently, it's a really big deal. But I am the only person who sees this as a negative. I'm the only person who sees this as a negative. The way I see this is not... Wow, look how good we're doing this year. I see it as, wow, look how much we sucked last year. Yes. We really mm -hmm. sucked last year. Like, were we even trying? <laughs> Not that any of that is real, of course. It's entirely fictional. I don't want to get in trouble. Also, apparently, good numbers equates to, what did you get on that last secret shop? It doesn't matter. Congratulations on the good numbers. Yeah. And I'm like, no, wait a second. We really should be in more trouble for this. This is bad. We got a ridiculously small score. We should not, you know, you need to punish us more. Yeah, but your numbers are great, so it doesn't matter, basically. So it's like, really? It doesn't matter? Damn. We should just be slapping customers then. Yeah. <laughs> you should just be like, do you have this book? No! And then just like Batman slapping Robin. Like, hi, I'm looking for this book. My parents are dead! Slap! <laughs> you know? Well, it sounds like you should shove books into every customer's hands as they come in and demand they buy it. Yeah, we're supposed to put the book in the customer hands, in the customer's hand, not just take them to the book, but then grab the book and then hand it to the customer. So what I'm thinking is, no, I, I, I mean, I mean, you grab any old book. I know, but my idea is, yeah, I, I'm looking for this book. Yeah, we have it over here. Let me show you. Here it is, and uh, oh, look whose hand it's in. Mine. <laughs> Like, I'm going to try and get tips for people just so I can hand them. Eleanor, get down from there. Somebody get Eleanor. <laughs> She's realizing that if she gets on the couch and then climbs onto the top of the couch and then gets onto the arm of the couch, she can turn all of the lights on and off. Ah. But she's so freaking small that basically she's doing a ladder match. <laughs> But yeah, uh, they, all of this story has been fictional. I don't want to get into any trouble. And speaking of troubling fiction, Stephen King, the Stephen King of Stephen Kings. Yes. Stephen King is having himself an impressive little uh, king naissance as of late. Okay. Um, the Dark Tower came out. Is it good? Is it bad? It doesn't matter. Somehow someone made it. Yeah. In and of itself, this is an astonishing feat. I've been hearing about the Dark Tower being something. God, for freaking decades. Oh, it's going to be a miniseries. Oh, it's going to be a made-for-TV movie. Oh, it's going to be a TV show now. Oh, it's going to be a movie. Oh, no, it's back to a miniseries. Oh, no, it's a movie now. Yeah. So the fact that it was made, it's like, okay, the fact that it exists kind of cancels out whether or not it's any good, in my mind at least. So the Dark Tower movie came out. It is somehow poised to be to be a big hit, which of course which of course is blasphemous. Why? Because of three words. Tim freaking Curry. <laughs> God damn it! I hated that miniseries, but Tim Curry. I, I, I Tim Curry. Yeah, and that's like that's like my first turn off to this movie. I hope it's good. I, I do hope it's good, but. I hate the clown makeup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's it's Tim ridiculous. Tim Curry did not look like an evil clown. 
Yeah. He was a very traditional looking clown. Tim Curry brought the fucking evil. You know? Yeah. yeah. That was all exactly. him. So like like making the clown look all evil. And I have a theory. I have a theory cuz I just reread okay. it on an audiobook. I have a You theory. re-listened. Yeah. Not really reread. You re-listen. But they, but what's your theory? Because they mention Pennywise as having been um a clown that was around in the in the um nineteen twenties. Yeah. Okay. So Pennywise as whoever Pennywise actually was gets mentioned in the book, but like only in passing. Okay. Yeah. Now the the kids would see things and get attacked by Pennywise and things like that. I I believe that that's basically mostly based on their imagination. You know that we don't see it affecting adults in the same way. Yeah. I theorize that Pennywise being a clown also had a very good imagination. A creative kind of person. Something like that. So I think that Pennywise was what the kids were back in the 20s. Okay? He was the adversary of it. Because he was able to see it. And then if you were it, wouldn't you want to dress in the skin of your last opponent? True. So that's my little it theory. That's a good it theory. Yes. Bella. Here. If you're bringing her over there, take this with you. Um, But it's not just the Dark Tower and it that is leading this King Nasons. Um, uh, I didn't realize this. Um, Stephen King's novel, Gerald's Game, is being turned into either a movie or a series that is premiering next month on Netflix. How do you get a series out? I don't know. I think I think it's a movie. I think it's a movie, but I'm not 100%. And his uh, Mr. Mercedes series of recent cop procedural slash serial killer slash horror slash supernatural thriller slash no one reads these seriously, so it doesn't really matter anyway, books. Yeah, I, ter- and I tried, I tried reading, uh, I tried listening to the first one. Um, for, I, I didn't know what it was even about. You know, I was just like, okay, yeah. that's his latest. Let me grab it. I also did a what eleven twenty six or twenty eight? The the Kennedy one. Yeah. Um, that was that good. One. I love that one. That was a really good book. Um, yeah. And and then once I found out, I, I was like, okay, great. First, it's going to be another fucking Stephen King book about how he got hit by a car. Okay, yeah. that's what I'm thinking about it. And then when I found out what it actually was. I was even less interested. I don't want to read a Stephen King detective procedural. Yeah. Yeah. That's all it was. Yeah. Yeah. Ridiculous. But yeah, Mr. Mercedes is being turned into a TV series for AT&T's new streaming service. Because soon, literally everything will have its own original content. Yeah. Be sure and check out McDonald's new sitcom, The Nuggets. Mm-hmm. But anywho, we're, we're coming King, close to Videodrome. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So Stephen King is having a bit of a moment right now. A moment in a lifetime of moments. Anyway, now all these teeny boppers are buying Stephen King's it, and it's like, I'm sorry, but bitch, you ain't reading that. (laughs) Seriously, there's no way you're reading this. 
Stephen King's It is like War and Peace had sex with another War and Peace and gave <laughs> birth to War and Peace triplets. There's no way your skinny jeans wearing little 14 year old self is reading It. And besides, the ending is a fucking cop out. Oh, God, I just, ever. I don't care. I don't care because that's how horrible the ending is to It. That I don't care. That I just cussed. That, that's, that's like Stephen King's Achilles heel, though, man. He does yeah. not know and, uh, how to end a fucking story. And it, yeah. it, the, the end of a Stephen King book is always a letdown. Yeah, always. So, okay, so let's get real. I do story time. Yes. I have done story time on and off for about 13 and a half years. Um, people... Kids get different things out of story time sometimes. A lot of kids sit down and they listen. I'm very interactive and hyperactive with the kids, and I talk to the kids, and I have, want the kids to talk with me, and it's very interactive and stuff. Um, it's difficult to train the parents for story time. It's not... A, it's not I don't pay too much attention to the the kids they get it yeah. it's the adults that have to learn okay mr steve wants these kids to interrupt me mr steve wants these kids to have an opinion and yeah. yell and attack me that that is a part of the story time because it's a different sort of story time but sometimes kids just get different things out of story time in the sense that there's there's one kid that comes to story time and this this one kid is just Oh, story time. That's the place. That's the, the time I get to go into a store and scream as loud as I can. Yeah. And say, so, okay, it's obvious. And that kid doesn't come all the time. But when the kid comes, he's just screaming and screaming all the time about everything. And just, no! And it's like, okay, apparently this kid gets screaming out of it. Understood. Yeah. I'll try to remember that for next time. And then there are just a couple of kids. There are there are two kids that come to story time and these two kids um they do everything that I want them to do but just more like I'm going to yell more I'm going to attack yeah. Mr. Steve more I'm going to throw things at him Goodbye. whatever he tells me mwah, good night Maxwell I love you whatever he tells me not to do I'm going to do it all the time I'm going to just freak out like really like he, this kid just spreads anarchy and most adults some adults pay attention uh -huh. they should i do i i'm i'm reference the godfather a lot at yeah. story time i make a lot of references to the godfather rick and morty things that the kids will just never get and there are some adults a lot of adults you know they'll sit down and they might be on their they might be on their phones but a lot of times uh, the parents are laughing more than the kids are laughing. But then there are some adults that are just like, okay, sit down. You uh, have fun at story time. I'm going to go get a coffee. Yeah. And suddenly, like, I'm babysitting your kids. So, um, so it's difficult. You know, a lot of times they just literally drop off their kids and I'm supposed to just, like, how am I supposed to parent your children? It's yeah. confusing. So anyway, last week's story time sucked, and these two kids, a brother and sister, they came in, and literally they were just, I couldn't get, a, I, I could barely get a, read a page of a book without these kids interrupting me, and literally they were constantly coming onto the stage, and then I would tell them to get off the stage, so then they'd sit on the stage, and I'd tell them to stop sitting on the stage, but they'd yeah. stay. Now, oh, Steve's turning this into a funny bit. And then it, the thing is that one kid does it and all the other kids start doing it. So now all the other kids are like, I'm also going to hit Steve and yell and throw things and yeah. sit literally inches away from his face. And a good story time can just make my week just glide. Yeah. You know, I have a good story time and a bunch of people are there and everybody's laughing. And then it, it brings a spring in my step and I work a little bit harder for the rest of the day. And then I come home and I'm all happy and hey, kids. And it, it, but if I get a bad story time, it just pisses me off for yeah. the entire freaking week. And I've just been in not a good mood 
And these two kids, you know, they're being they're being rude. And then the, remembering some adults just don't pay attention. And so story time just got the best of me. It wasn't my best story time. Yeah. And 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 a parent complained. Oh, yeah. Yeah. One parent is just I I went to your story time and the, and the storyteller has has gotten these kids all worked up and the kids are being rude and they're yelling at them and they're not listening. And now my child thinks that she can do that. And so she's yelling and being rude. And I I I am I am having a horrible time at this story time. And I just I am never going to be coming back to your story time. And it's like, oh, I'm so <laughs> sorry about that. Here, let me let me give you your money back. Oh, wait, it's free. Mm-hmm. Thank would that I have managers that support me, and you know that they went yelling to the managers, and the managers like, "You need to get another storyteller." And the manager is literally like, "Okay, well, our storyteller has been doing story time in three states for over thirteen years, and he's one of the best storytellers that are out there. I am sorry that you had a bad time, but he really is the best storyteller out there. And thank, thank." would that my managers actually supported me like that because yeah. there have been other managers that would have literally like put me through a wooden spike cannibal holocaust style for that yeah if i was in california and someone complained like that to perry or greg i would have been beheaded guillotined yes jesus i wish he was joking yeah. yeah. Mm, well, again, he he's transposing his blog over, so yeah. I, I remember yeah. those stories. Yeah. And uh, Greg had a habit of not letting people. In retrospect, thinking about this, this seems ridiculous, and no other manager has a, that I've ever had to deal with has ever done this, but he did. Greg in California had a habit of not letting people call in sick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he'd be like, hey, hey, Greg, this is Steve. I'm going to have to call in sick. Oh, really? You're calling in sick? Why? What's wrong with you? Have you thrown up? What's wrong? <laughs> oh, I'm really dizzy, and I've just been really sick. And it's like, oh, so you're calling in sick for your 9 to 5.30 shift? How about you come in at 11? Yeah. How about you come in at 11? You know, you come in for maybe, you know, maybe not a full eight hours. Maybe you just come in for six hours. How about that? Mm -hmm. Are you going to the hospital? Is it that bad? <laughs> How about you come in a little bit later? And he would literally be like, I yeah. called in six. So now I'm coming in in two hours. I don't know how he did this. <laughs> yeah, no, he, he would like to ask questions that he's legally not even allowed to ask. Yeah. Yeah. And yet somehow get people to come in. Yeah. Because we so, felt some sick, fucked up sense of like loyalty to our company, I guess. I don't know. By other employees. Yeah. So yeah. Surprise, surprise! That manager is now a cop. Oh my god. Yeah, he's now a policeman. Oh. No. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. Uh, not surprising me at all. Yeah. Well then, Bunny. Yeah. Bunny. My widow bunny bunny. Yeah. It's the end of August. It's still back to school time. There's still a lot of a lot of back to school stuff and highlighters and three ring binders. But do not let your freaking guard down, bunny. Not even for a second. <laughs> okay? Because after August is September, fall, scented candles, umbrellas, coats. After September is October. Halloween, then yeah. Thanksgiving. Then Black Friday, and then goddamn Christmas. Ah, it's right behind us. Yeah. Freaking pumpkin spice lattes are breathing down your neck right now, and you don't even know it. Yes. In fact, my and, work. And, and October, right? October is coming up, which reminds me, I need to pick four movies. Yeah. Because that yeah. is my birthday month. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry, I'll have to dwell on that. Yeah. No, no, go for it. My workload goes into hyperdrive from October until about February, and it's already starting. Yes. And it's so upsetting, and it's like, hey, Steve, it's not the holidays yet. It's still October. Anyway, here's 12 copies of the Chronicles of Narnia box set. <laughs> Have fun with these. Yeah. 
And I'm just there, just like grumble, grumble, god damn it. It's not the holidays yet. We know, but still. Uh, you know, just got to be prepared and all that. Did you get our 11 boxes of Harry Potter books? Yes, I got the 11 boxes of Harry Potter books that I have no room for. Thanks for that. What about the 35 boxes full of calendars? Yes, I got oh those too. <laughs> okay. Have fun with all that. Bye, Steve. Are, are you just going to store it until the season comes around? Uh, we're doing what we can. We are doing yeah. what we can with it. And finally this week, I want to get real again, because I need to talk about my other half. Okay. And I'm not talking about my wife. Okay. I'm talking about Farm Boy Veteran. Farm Boy Veteran. He is the very young, happily married, active duty soldier who originally was our store's sole receiving manager. Yes. Incredibly Christian, proudly Christian, in your face Christian. Uh -huh. Then he was called to duty, and I was originally put into receiving temporarily at first. Yes. And then we, we got a call from Uncle Sam saying that Farm Boy Veteran would be gone for seven months, and then he'd be back for about four months, maybe five, and then he was being sent to classified for 12 to 14 months. Okay. So the so the so so the store decided. Well, I guess we have to hire another receiving manager, and they immediately went looking for another store for another receiving manager. They immediately went looking everywhere but the general vicinity of Steve. <laughs> A little bit bitter about that, but yeah. so eventually, I I I impressed some suits, and I was hired, and and. A uh, farm boy veteran did come back and we worked for about five months, four or five months or so. It was a bit awkward because it was the two of us in this room. Mm -hmm. And then, boom, he was gone again. And this time gone well over a year. And um, it's weird because it's the, because he was being he was gone for october november december january february and then coming back in march and it's like yeah. oh great so you're missing the holiday and the other holiday and black friday and christmas and then immediately after christmas when everyone comes in with a 50 dollar gift card yeah and then immediate and then once that dies down inventory so you're missing all of that mm-hmm not that I'm bitter or anything. No, so then he no. comes back for like four or five months. And then it's like, oh, yeah, now I'm leaving for a year. So have fun once again being alone by yourself for the holiday and the other holiday and Black Friday and Christmas. And immediately after Christmas and everyone comes in with a $50 gift card and inventory. Have fun with that again. Yeah. Oh my God, and um, so I've been so now. I might be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure what? that I have now been in charge of receiving for longer than he had the post when I took over for him. Yes. And yet I'm still under his shadow. And I, I still feel under his shadow and oh, I so. still feel. Um, the guy's so so freaking nice yeah. and earnest and innocent and pure he was raised in a small farm in rural oklahoma yeah. he was raised christian he's never missed church he's never drank coffee he's never swore he's never drank alcohol he's six foot three blonde haired blue eyed innocent young white boy who once said the sentence that i love and not in an ironic way in an honest literal way he said the sentence you know what steve i can't i don't understand why all of these people drink all of these coffees and lattes and energy drinks when they can get the same feeling by just waking up and doing some jumping jacks <laughs> and there's a part of me that felt like I just got to hold a newborn kitten. Yes. Like, oh my God, 
I just heard something unironic. You honestly mean that? God bless you, young man. <laughs> oh my God! Never watch South Park. Never get on the internet. You need to stay this pure. Stay gold, <laughs> pony boy. <laughs> Oh, like you can't hate this man. Yeah. It's possible to hate him. Like he ha- he has a habit of it's it, it's time for my break. Now, I don't want to go all the way to the break room because that's away from my post here in the receiving area. So I'm just going to sit here on the floor and receiving and quietly read the Bible to myself for 15 minutes. Oh. And it, the guy oh, that's just, kicking position, though. You just, you can't, can't hate this man. You can't hate this man. And just to be clear, I am not saying that one or two of our older managers seem suspiciously more enthusiastic to deal with the blonde-haired, blue-eyed, white-skinned farm boy veteran than yeah. they are in dealing with the long-haired, erratic, sensitive minority, the only minority in the entire store. No, Bunny, I don't even know where you got that idea from. <laughs> Damn, put words in my mouth much, Bunny? God. It doesn't matter, because it this is all fake anyway. Yeah. Legal reasons. Anyway, Boy Veteran is coming back next month. Okay. And that should be question mark. Yeah. Because he's, he's coming... It, 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 and it's weird, because it's like, where has he been? I don't know, it's classified. Yeah. Like the last time, like I knew exactly where he was. He was in West Virginia. Yeah. He was on a base. It was boring. But this time it was in classified. And I'm like, ooh, classified. Okay. So it it he was gone for so long that eventually I would I would message him. Cause cause you know, we're we're friends on Facebook and all that. And I'm like, oh snap. Hey, farm boy veteran. Um so our store manager quit. And now we have a new one, and her name is this, and she's really nice. Okay. I get a message like two days later. Oh, wow. Thank you for letting me know, Steve. That is so nice of you. While he wears a necklace of ears. <laughs> <laughs> so so then, I'll, so then I'm Smiley like, oh, so. emoji. <laughs> <clears throat> so he's coming back. So that's so that's interesting. And then the crazy thing is, is that I was watching the news and there was, a, you know, typical Oklahoma news. Tomorrow's going to be sunny with a high of 98 with massive clouds and torrential floods. <laughs> like typical Oklahoma weather. Yeah. And finally in the news tonight, a bit of happy news. Uh uh, hundreds of loved ones were reunited with their family members who were off serving a grisly tour in Afghanistan. And sure enough, he's right there in his fatigues, hugging his wife. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, damn, I think you were in the shit. <laughs> Before you were just guarding a base in Virginia. I mm-hmm. think you were just sent to the quagmire. Yeah. It's like, well, hot damn. I'll make sure not to make loud noises. Yes. You know? Mm-hmm. So so he's coming back. I'm proud of myself because of how well we get along. Yeah. Because Farm Boy Veteran and I, we do get along. We we you know, we worked right next to each other for a long period in time and it got to the point where it's like, uh, you and I are in no way alike. And uh, there's got to be some uh, there's got to be some common ground. Mm -hmm. And then finally, like he's listening to his music, which is mostly uh, Christian rap. Yeah. Oh, Oh. and yeah. And classical music. And then one day some album comes on and I'm like, wait a second. Is this punk goes pop volume five? (laughs) Oh, my God, I own this album. Hey, we have the same album. There's a connection, and so like, it, like we're completely, we have nothing in common, but we love a good cover song. <laughs> Both of us, we're just we love a good cover song, like a really good one. 
that 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 takes the song in a different direction. We're big cover song fans, so proud of that. Yeah. And then I saw a, another another chance for us to connect when he was listening over and over again to the Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack. Yeah. And I'm like, ooh, this is an opening. Because I love that that movie. So, okay, this will be my opening. Hey, so you listening to the Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack? I have that album, too. It's great. And he goes, yes. And I hope to one day see the movie, possibly. <laughs> and it's like, okay, I'm tapping out of this. Because you can't own a soundtrack without having seen the movie. That's basically no. blasphemy. No, especially... Especially going from from Christian rap to anything in the vicinity of David Bowie, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. bit weird, bit weird. I I would think his head would explode. Yeah, but the thing that's great is that when you look at a uh, farm boy veteran and you look at me and you say, okay. Which one of these two people has gotten in trouble for listening to explicit things in receiving? Yeah. Everyone's finger would be pointed at me. Yes. But uh, it wasn't me, and I'll tell you why. Farm Boy Veteran had the bizarre habit of listening to audiobooks while he was at work. And he said, well, I guess I'm going to try and figure out what all of this Game of Thrones nonsense is about. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, like the store manager comes in and then chapter 17, more raping. <laughs> and it's like, wait, you got in trouble for listening to explicit stuff and receiving. Oh, my God. It's a miracle. <laughs> the Lord works in mysterious ways. That's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, so I was nice. telling the, so the store manager is like, so tell me about Josh. I haven't even, hey, I mean, tell me about Farm Boy Veteran. I haven't even met him. Tell me about Kristoff. Tell me about Ezekiel. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a name from the Bible. So how about this? Tell me about Oprah. Yes. Because apparently, that's a, a story from the Bible. Seriously, Eleanor, you look so tired. You look drunk. That's how tired you look. <laughs> just tap out and just go to sleep, okay? Just tap out. Just tap out. So so tell me about a uh, farm boy veteran. I don't even know about him. And I'm like, well, you know, he doesn't drink. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't you know, drink caffeine. He's a real straight shooter. He's a real honest guy. It, it's impossible to hate him. He doesn't cuss. And then yeah. it suddenly... Like she wasn't really paying attention to me, but once I got to she, he doesn't cuss. Suddenly, my store manager is like, "Wait, he doesn't cuss? Oh fuck! <laughs> oh shit! I need to, I, I need to check my fucking language now. <laughs> oh my god! What if I just get it all out now? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'm pretty sure language doesn't work like that, but you know, yeah. whatever floats your boat." <laughs> But it would be fun to watch your manager stand there and curse for like yeah. 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. No, no, yeah. I think he's still got more in there. Come on. <laughs> yeah. So so he came back, but then he he now he gets vacation time. Yeah. Because he was, you know, at war. So he's spending like two or three weeks in New Zealand, uh, visiting locations where they filmed the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> and uh, no well, offense. Okay, so, so he does have fairly normal interests outside of the Bible. Yeah, yeah, he, I guess. He is, he is tolerant of other Thing, especially listen to the Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack. And don't they think the Lord of the Rings is evil too? But not the movie. He hasn't seen the movie. Uh huh. He hasn't seen the movie Guardians of the Galaxy. That might be too much for him. I don't know. Yeah. But there are certain songs 
there are certain songs that I have to remove from my work appropriate music playlist. Yeah. Oh, v- v- for his homecoming. Yeah, for his homecoming. Uh-huh. There's a song from There's a song from from Mariachi El Bronx. Okay. I. I discovered them through Lucha Underground because they're a mariachi band, but they, and they sing mariachi sounding songs, but in English. And the first time I heard them, it was like, it was like a, like a, like my mind was playing a trick on me. I wasn't yeah. expecting to hear English, you like know, that, like that time Jeannie understood Japanese. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Oh my God. Yeah. So, so they have one song and it's, it's silver or lead, uh, silver or lead. You have to choose silver or lead. Now we'll take your money because Jesus is dead. <laughs> yeah, you chose wrong. You chose silver. I chose lead. Now give me your money because Jesus is dead. I'll have to get that one out. <laughs> and um, Saul Williams has a song called List of Demands, which is literally about him trying to kill God. Oh, okay. So I'll have to get that one out. And, oh, yeah, and the song Dear God. I'll have to get rid of that as well. Okay. Forgot about that. Any others? Um, Dear God, I hope you got the letter, and I pray you can make it better down here. And I'm not interested in you lowering the price of beef. <laughs> but all the people on Earth, they're starving in the streets because they don't get enough to eat from God. But wait a second. I want to back that up because, I, you know, it would help me if you did lower the price of beef. Yeah. That's just my thing. <laughs> I got to get rid of that. I got to get rid of that song, too. I leave the Crash Test Dummy song. mm 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 because that's the best anti-God song that's ever been written. Because the song is so iconic and such a part of like the early 90s that people don't even notice that it's an anti-religious song. It's the best secret anti It's the best secretly atheist song ever written. I'm trying to I'm trying to place the song. Crash test it's, dummies. It, like, yeah, I, I remember their name. The 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 lead singer was a bass. Okay. So he had this ridiculously deep voice. So he the song starts off like once there was this boy who Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's a song and the first verse is all about this boy who who uh uh Didn't go to school. He got into a car accident and his hair got white and Hey, he didn't understand why his hair did that. His hair just did that after the accident. And then there's the chorus. And then the second verse is all about this girl who would never shower after gym. And one day they forced her to. And when she got naked, she had all these dots and blotches all over her body. And she's like, hey, uh, everybody made fun of her. But she's like, hey, uh, this is just the way that my skin has always been. But those kids had it easy because check out this third kid. This kid, after school, had to go to church. <laughs> and he would move around and shake and shake his hands and say silly stuff. He never understood why. Hey, don't make fun of him. His parents just always forced him to. Yeah. And that song was a number one song on American hit music charts. <laughs> so that one I'm leaving in. Okay. Because people don't pay attention to that one. But yeah, I'm going to have to purge my music. Anyway, that is it for Notes from the Bookstore this week. And remember, boys and girls and gender potpourris, you too can save 10% on all of your purchases. And all you have to do is stop asking me, do you work here? Yes, I do. I'm wearing a tie. I have a name tag and I'm holding a stack of books. I know you're confused because I'm a brownie, but they do (laughs) hire brown people at bookstores. Hi, I'm looking for a book. Do you work here? Are you are you an employee here? It's like, yes. Do you see the name tag and the fact that I walked up to you and said, can I help you with anything? Those (laughs) are clues that I work here. 